I will explain to you how to become a cyber forensic investigator even if you don't have any experience or any degree. But first, it's important to understand the scope of what a cyber forensic investigator does as the job can vary between organizations. Therefore, it's important to be clear on the duties of the cyber forensic investigator so you can build the right skills that you need to become a cyber forensic investigator. A cyber forensic investigator can work in the private sector so they could work in a bank or an insurance company but they can also work in law enforcement so they could be in a local police station or even at the federal level. The job can be very exciting but at times it can also be a little bit dark and I will explain to you why later in the video. But having said that you can get paid really well doing this role and there is certainly demand within law enforcement but also in the broader industry. This is a highly technical role where you will be conducting a technical forensic analysis but I will give you a step by step roadmap to get you to build the right skills so you can become a cyber forensic investigator even if you have zero technical skills or a degree in the cheapest and fastest way possible. We're gonna make some gatekeepers cry with this one. Let's get into it. The main issue with digital forensics or cyber forensic is that 99.9% .9 of people don't actually know what a cyber forensic investigator does. This includes individuals who work in IT like network engineers and help desk professional. Even some people who work in cyber security don't seem to have a solid understanding on what exactly a cyber forensic investigator is supposed to do. It's one of those seemingly mythical jobs that you may have heard about but you're not 100% certain what it entails. And I don't blame you. In the cyber security world, job titles are an absolute mess. Someone could have the title of a cyber analyst but their day-to-day -day duties are essentially cyber forensic investigations. I've seen this a lot in the industry so it's perfectly normal to be confused. Now to simplify it, we first need to understand the relationship between incident response and digital forensics. They're usually lumped together. You may have come across the term DFIR, which really stands for digital forensics and incident response. They are two completely different roles, but they can also be performed as one role. In incident response, we follow a certain mythology and a procedure to detect a cyber incident, analyze a cyber incident, and respond to it. Now, as part of our response to an, a cyber incident, we may or may not perform digital forensic analysis. For example, if a company got hacked and the cyber security professionals are trying to stop this hack or they're trying to analyze and see what happens to maybe contain this attack and prevent it from happening again, a cybersecurity professional should perform forensic analysis to look inside the hard drive to see how did this attack happen. So we can look for certain timestamps, we can look for certain files that were accessed, or we can look for certain signatures. This analysis is referred to as forensic analysis. Now the analysis can happen in a hard drive, but it can also happen in memory or in a USB stick. It can also happen in things like a mobile phone or a cloud server. I've even recently been involved in an investigation on a Tesla electric car. So the scope of a cyber forensic investigator can be really broad. Now performing a forensic analysis as part of incident response, that can be one category of forensic analysis. The other broad category is also doing it in law enforcement. So as part of a criminal investigation, you can be part of an electronic crime unit. You analyze devices that are part of an ongoing investigation or perhaps you need to look into the mobile phone of a suspect or you can analyze hard drives to see if they contain anything illegal. The outcome of your investigation can influence and even determine whether someone gets a jail sentence. So it's a pretty serious job. Now one of the main reasons why cyber forensic investigation can be a confusing job title is as I've explained earlier there is a difference between performing it within law enforcement or within the civilian world. Unfortunately TV shows and movies whenever they highlight cyber forensic investigations it's almost always within law enforcement because it's a little bit more exciting and it can make for a good TV show. So shows like CSI Miami is entirely based on cyber forensics. Now within law enforcement you will be analyzing hard drives or web browsers or mobile phones that are part of a criminal investigation. Now unfortunately a significant part of doing cyber forensic analysis within law enforcement could involve the investigator looking at illegal material but some of that material can contain explicit material that could be very distressing. In fact someone I know closely have spent significant amount of money and training to become a cyber forensic investigator but then he was hired to work at a local police station unfortunately he only lasted for six months because he simply couldn't handle looking at explicit material you may think you're tough but trust me you don't know what you don't know so this is something that you need to be aware of as you're trying to become a cyber forensic investigator within law enforcement but the good news is the skills that you learn can definitely be useful outside of law enforcement so you could be working as a cyber forensic investigator within a cyber security operation 
information center or within a consulting firm where your investigation is part of responding to cyber incidents where you try to stop cyber attacks or contain cyber attacks or even perform what we refer to as post-compromise analysis where you perform analysis after the hack has happened to determine what happened but also the organizations can have some lessons so they can prevent this from happening again. Now if you're watching this video then you are passionate about this type of work and you want to build your skills in the area of cyber criminal investigation. I will show you how to get hired both in the civilian world and in law enforcement later in this video but before we continue a word from our sponsor Aura. Are you tired of receiving those spam calls from unknown numbers all day? I know I am. Luckily today's sponsor Aura can help. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to spammers. These brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them but they make it very difficult to do so. But that's where Aura comes in. Aura can identify the data brokers giving out your information and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. You can try Aura for free for two weeks using my link aura.com slash Unix guy. They also have many other features that protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see and it's really easy to set up. Instead of having multiple different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, parental controls, password management, identity theft and more, Aura has them all in one place and you get everything at one affordable price. You can either let those data brokers keep profiting off of your personal data or you can go to aura.com slash unix guy today to start your two week free trial and i'll also leave a link to it in the description box below and back to the video as you may have guessed cyber forensics or digital forensics is a highly technical role but as promised i will show you how to get there if you're already working in it so you could have some programming skills or networking skills or you could be working in help desk but this will also apply to you if you're a university student or if you work in a completely different domain like marketing or nursing or physical security for example. So first things first, the first course that I want you to start with is from RIT University hosted on the edX platform. It's called Computer Forensics. This will be our starting point but just be mindful that this course has a prerequisite. So RIT recommend that you do their own course as a prerequisite. I personally don't recommend that you do that prerequisite. Instead I want you to do the Google Cyber Security first because it will give you everything that you need to go through this Computer Forensics course especially the Linux skills that you will need to go through that course. So if you have no technical background, then do the Google Cyber Security first, then do this RIT course. Doing both of these courses, you will have the necessary technical skills to begin your journey in digital forensics. I covered the Google Cyber Security certificate in detail in this video, so please check it out. Now, once you finish both courses, then the next step will be to build in-depth digital forensic skills. Now to perform forensic analysis, this will be as part of an investigation or as part of responding to cyber incidents. So you will be analyzing a lot of hard drives. You will need to retrieve data that's either deleted or hidden, but things will get a little bit complicated because things can vary significantly between different operating systems. So you may need to use different techniques based on which version of Windows that you're dealing with, or maybe you're dealing with Mac OS or Linux, and things can be entirely different if you're trying to retrieve information from a mobile phone. Now, you don't need to learn everything at once in the beginning, but at minimum, you need to be competent with retrieving information information from hard drives in the Windows operating system. This is the bare minimum that can get you a job in digital forensics. Later on, you can add skills for mobile phones or IoT devices or cloud servers to expand your skills later. Now, the good news is there is a beginner friendly course that you can do after the RIT course and the Google Cyber Security Certificate where you can develop this skill and more. The course is from the InfoSec Institute. It's called Computer Forensics Specialization. It consists of three course series. The first one is digital forensics concept. Here you will get your introduction to the world of digital forensics. You will understand the roles and responsibilities of the forensic examiner or the forensic investigator. You will also get to learn the methodology that we use in digital forensics and you'll get to prepare a forensic workstation. The second course is about the legal consideration for digital forensics. You will get introduced to some of the laws and regulations around digital forensics but you'll also learn a little bit about the chain of custody and how to deal with evidence within digital forensics. Then you will go through the investigation process and you will learn how to collect digital evidence and how to store the evidence securely because remember this is a highly critical role. The outcome of your investigation can determine the outcome of criminal charges so evidence handling is an extremely important part of this process and at the end of it there is a digital forensics project where you get to apply everything that you've learned in a lab environment. Digital forensics is a practical hands-on practice. You need to practice everything that you learn. This is not a theoretical field. You can't multiple choice your way out of digital forensics.
Forensics. Now the next course goes through Windows OS Forensics. As I said, knowing the Windows OS is the bare minimum that you need to become a digital forensic investigator. This is an assumed skill. Everyone expects you to know it. Later on, you can learn more about the Mac OS and other operating systems, but at minimum, Windows OS is a non-negotiable. So here you learn about the different file systems within the Windows OS, the FAT file system, the NTFS file system, and you'll even get to perform forensics within the Windows registry files. This is an in-depth look at the Windows OS, and as you will discover in the course, there is a lot to be learned in this area. So it's definitely not a small area. The final course is a deep dive within the Windows registry files. It is an ocean and there is so much that you need to learn as a cyber forensic investigator. So as you can see, you will go through different types of files and different types of software and you'll get to apply everything in a lab environment. After you finish this course, you will have the necessary skills that can get you a role as a cyber forensic investigator. But as you will see, this is a highly technical area. So you may forget things or you may feel overwhelmed. This is where we need to learn from different resources. So the next course that I want you to do is from INE, which is the Certified Digital Forensics Professional. This is a fantastic hands-on practical certification where you'll get to review some of the concepts that you've already learned, but you'll also get introduced to even more concepts and you will get to perform this all in a hands-on lab. And if you're competent enough, you can pass the certification and have more digital forensic qualifications on your CV, but also on your LinkedIn profile. Now we can't really talk about digital forensics without mentioning the SANS Institute. A few years ago, we didn't really have many options for cybersecurity training, especially for digital forensics training. The SANS Institute was the only institute that provided us with cyber forensics training. The two most popular certifications were the JAX Certified Forensic Examiner and the JAX Certified Forensic Analyst. I have done the GCFA and to this day, it's one of my favorite certifications to do. As you may be aware, SANS training is extremely high quality, but unfortunately, it's very expensive. But there is a nice affordable way to do it, which is through the work study program. So follow this URL and then go apply to the SANS work study program. This will enable you to do the training as an assistant where you help out SANS to run their training. You help them out with some administrative work and this way you get to do the training and the certification for a fraction of the price. I highly recommend you apply there, especially for their forensics courses because they will teach you a lot. Another great training option for digital forensics is from two of my favorite companies, which is TryHackMe and Hack the Box. They are both practical hands-on training platform. Both of them offer really nice digital forensics upskilling modules. So TryHackMe has digital forensics and incident response training, which is really good. You get exposed to a lot of tools and you can practice them in a hands-on lab. Again, this will strengthen your skills, but it will also give you more chance to practice so you don't feel lost and you don't feel like you're forgetting things. Hack the Box have a new series called the Sherlock's, where you do a series of challenges that are based on digital forensics. I'll leave a link to both in the description box below so you can check them out. Now as far as getting hired is concerned, there is a difference between landing a cyber forensics role within law enforcement versus within the civilian world. Within law enforcement, you can actually start as a police officer and then get transferred to the electronic crimes unit. This is a great option because usually the agency or the police station that hired you will pay for all of your training. But I don't want you to limit yourself to that. I remember I had a career mentorship with an individual who worked at a police station and he told me that he's unable to transfer to the electronic crimes unit in his station because his boss didn't want to. So my recommendation to him was try in different stations, try in different law enforcement agencies. Law enforcement will always have a preference for ex-law enforcement officers. If you already have law enforcement experience, then you are a perfect candidate to perform this role because you understand the culture and you understand the stress and the way that law enforcement functions more than someone who is a civilian. So this is a great route for anyone who works in the military or in the police. I highly recommend that avenue. Now, as a civilian, if you want to land one of those roles in law enforcement, then you will need to do the training courses that I recommend before you can land one of those roles. Now, as far as civilian jobs are concerned, the biggest mistake that I see individuals make when they want to land a digital forensics role is that they restrict themselves to just forensics roles. As I said in the beginning of the video, titles in cybersecurity are an absolute mess. So when you do a job search, I want you to type the word digital forensics, but I also want you to try and type the keyword cyber and just look through all the job because sometimes the job may include digital forensics tasks, but it can also be a broader cybersecurity job. So digital forensics can be part of the job, but not the entire job. So this is an important aspect to consider. The other important aspect to consider is apply to SOC analyst roles. Working as part of a security operation center, you will get an opportunity to perform some digital forensics activities. It may not be the entire role, but as part of your job, 
job in a security operation center, you can get that exposure to get some hands-on experience with digital forensics, which can later on lead you to landing a full-time cyber forensics investigator. So that's definitely a great role. The other option that you can look into is incident response. As I explained in the beginning of this video, digital forensic can be part of incident response. So a digital forensic incident response role is a perfect role where you get to apply those skills, but you can also learn a little bit more about digital forensics. This is a fantastic role by Mendiant, which is now owned by Google, where you get to respond to cyber incidents, but you also get to perform cyber forensic investigations. Now, one word of caution when it comes to cyber forensics is that the last thing I want you to do is to restrict yourself to just digital forensics job. Think of yourself as a cyber security professional who have digital forensic skills. So the job may or may not be a full-time cyber forensic investigation. So for that, I recommend that you grow your general cyber security skills, especially your blue team or cyber analyst skills. And the best way to do that is through hands-on practical training and certification like the one I recommend in this video. So I highly recommend you check it out and I'll see you there.